Who do you want to do it?
don't show so much of indifference or so much of anger towards me. We will not go into the anger part but dwell more on the indifference part because the base of uh, uh, the Varnam, it is like Madhra Bhakti. So when there is Madhra Bhakti, there is no scope for actual anger. So everything that comes, every other emotion that comes is based on the Sai of either Shingaram or Bhakti or a blend of the two. Right? So we will take Kokumu in terms of do not show indifference towards me rather than don't be angry with me. Right? And Tapatraya Harudai. You are the one who removes the Tapatraya. Tapatraya means three kinds of worries or troubles that a human faces. There are two uh, sets of threes that are considered. One set is where you talk about the manna ase, ponna ase, penna ase, which means uh, the desire to possess properties, which could be either in the form of uh, immovable assets like uh, houses or to have um, a desire for wealth in terms of gold and uh, you know invaluable uh, jewels and diamonds and such things or to have a desire or lust for the opposite gender. So he is one who removes these three kind of desires and um, you know uh, delivers us from the bondage of the universe, uh, bondage with the world. So that is one set of tapatra. The other three is where you are afflicted by your own karma or by the force of nature or um, by uh, what to say, something like what you call as a Deva Bhutta, right? Where uh, um, it is it is this divine uh, intervention because of which you are put through some testing times. So he is the one who removes or delivers you from these three kind of uh, uh, what is it, problems or uh, troubles, right? So you, Tyagesha, who can deliver us from these kind of troubles are here as a Pratyaksha Deva. And this is your duty, to deliver us. But Idemi, what is this? Tyagaraja Swami, Idemi. What is this, O Tyagesha? Why are you being so indifferent towards me that to a person or an Atma which has travelled for so long and it's seeking you to understand you, to know you, to realize you and to merge with you. So why do you test such an Atma which has journeyed for so long and is approaching you? So this forms the essence of the uh, Varna. Okay, clear? Any doubts? Okay, so we'll start with the Varna and then again we'll go in depth um, and we'll try and understand what each of the Kaivan means. I just want to add one small information. <coughs> when Chitra Vishwaswaran came to Cleveland, we were going to honor her. I asked her to do Rupa Mujuchi and telling her that this is supposed to be Kalakshetra Sutu, but I wanted to come and do it in Cleveland. She said, I have to learn it. I have never learned Rupa Mujuchi. I said, you've got three months, learn it and then come and present it and she presented it. So in Cleveland, her concept was Varna Mas Rupa Mujuchi. Okay. Hello, you're in the line. Okay. Let's start. So, we started Usila R, which is Samatla Bhu, right? So, Rupa Bhu, Rupa Bhu, Chi, Bala Chi, Did I have 
on that form deeply, right? So it's nice if you actually close your eyes and internalize on that form and then come back to him saying, this is what I have been doing, right? right? To you I surrender, to whom? That form that I have always been so uh, deeply and intently meditating upon, right? One, two, three.
So the next hand again is going to talk about one of his attributes, which is his purple colored hair. Let's go. So again, we know that uh, the copper color is attributed to his hair because um, it is considered to be a representation of every form of energy. So whenever there is an energy field, I think there is also a field of attraction. So that's what we show here to say that I am so deeply attracted towards you and that's why I have come all this way. Right? This is my interpretation. One, two, three, seven, ten, twenty. It goes up, hands together. A little more uh, feeling in your mudras also. Right? It's not probably these days. It's it's okay. I mean, it's not something very um, what to say. Uh, there's no arbutam in having a copper color hair, no, <laughs> right? But what we're talking about is not just the color of the hair, but what that stands for, right? So to think of a lord to whom uh, we have to do that is you know this copper colored hair is a representation of every form of energy, right? So show that with a lot more of Adbhuta because it's not just about the colour but it is about what that rep represents and what it stands for. So, a lot of Adbhuta. Here again Dashatana to show the grandeur of his being. So there's a running here towards him because of that attraction, right? So Manasale let it go from the heart, from deep within. The heart is blossoming, we are offering that to him, right? So right? the creator of both the illusion 
and the only one who can deliver us from that also to that lord i surrender and i have come to realize you okay so Jo chi vale 
Kishore Chak- Chakram and the Shankar. Again, there's a difference in uh, the way you hold yourself because one is a destructive force and one is the creative force. So, yeah. And here again, we don't show ugly this way, but by showing this third eye. Because here again, the Agni stands for Jnana. It is not a physical Agni. So we use this to show Shiva's third eye, which is represented by Agni, and which again stands for Jnana. So, and the reason why you get up from the Murmati is to, to say that, to show that uh, Lingodhya is the rising of the Agni, because Agni is always uh, Udhvamukha. It's something that always rises upwards. Same is the case with knowledge and wisdom. They are all good from them. Right? Padama. Visually for us, it looks like just one part of uh, 
uh, the reverse that it showed. Right? So even if it is both hands, start seeing from here. So your eyes cover the entire space. But even if it's going to be one hand, if it's only one hand, I can follow your hand and move from the side to that side. Right? For the time. Plenty of time.
be expansive. It will be more of a contractive emotion, right? So instead of searching like this, let it be more contractive. Blow the stress.
You know the place, right? See? Like such film?
uh, interpret folk and more or less indifference than anger. Mm -hmm. For the simple reason that Shrigaram or Bhakti does not give scope for actual anger. Right? So even that anger will treat it more with uh, uh, more like a sense of indifference. Who you troubling me? That kind of uh, emotion, right? So oh, first. shades depending on the context. This is again seemingly a very uh, very often repeated action and uh, we normally don't pay much attention to this particular movement but uh, it's actually capable of conveying a lot when we superimpose emotions onto that particular movement. So, if you know Kokum, is this a kind of relationship that we share? So, between you and me, why should there be so much of Kokum? Please don't do this. Okay? Sami, you my Sami, you my Lord. Right? And this again indicates that, uh, uh, what to say, the, the Paramatma which is lying dormant which is within each of us. So when that uh, is aroused, that is when you get into a state where you can actually converse with the higher being. So it is elevating yourself, elevating that, uh, awakening that superior energy or the super consciousness within you so that you are in a plane where you can actually converse with the universe or a su supreme being, right? So that's what this indicates. So I am in a state where I have awakened myself. At this point of time, why this kind of a dealing between you and me, right? Why do you control your own um, 
what to say. You don't love towards me. Why do you control all your emotions? Because this is the seat of all emotions, right? Like how you have this is the core of physical movement, this is the core for all the emotions. So why are you holding all that under control? Why do you have to do this? Bend down. Okay? So Because 
it was done with an intention of you know being able to choreograph into a dance composition those sari films have a slightly stronger shade of shringara so even in the hands some of them are a little towards uh, 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 a little strongly towards an element of bhakti and some kaligar are a little uh, inclined towards shringara right so this hand that you going to do now has a little more uh, element of shringara in it right so
uh, it's logical to take a step. Mm -hmm. Next guy, you're okay to please want to recap of the four. Mm -hmm. yeah. The first one is
the last hand is
घड़न पुता तंदी पुता सदी में तो तांती तक 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 तो तांती तांती तक तो तांती तक तो तांती तक Thank <laughs> you. 
Yes, okay. Then we will get along really well. Okay, I also considered a slave driver. Okay. Okay, so. Oh no. I didn't say that. So I want to give you one example. Okay. Sashi Kiran comes and helps me to schedule and everything else. So I call him one day. So Sashi, you got to come now. Mama, um, I cannot come. Why? He said um, somebody came and hit me with his car, and it's nothing serious, but. Uh, I got a body pain and I'm lying down. So she tomorrow the schedule has to go. Take a couple of painkillers and come here. <laughs> and you took painkillers and came from <laughs> So, okay, you will gel very well. Okay? Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> what did I sign up for? <laughs> <laughs> so she did that. He took two painkillers and came, worked with me actually. Okay. <laughs> Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Mommy, I'm going to go five minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes. Thank you. Thank you. New Year with lots more of happy dancing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 